Greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Well, well, well. I have lots of goodies for you today. A little bit later on, after we have covered the more pressing matters, I am going to dish up a nice helping of Schadenfreude, which I think you might enjoy the savouring of. Let us put it that way. But before we get into chewing up on Schadenfreude, I am going to read out what Leander B. says. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, Lady C. As a Tasmanian and very proud of our Crown Princess Mary, I was wondering if you had any thought thoughts on Queen Margareta's abdication. And I'm going to read out two others on the same topic because it's all very representative. And then I'll just cover the whole thing in one shebang, if I may. Suzanne Brock says, Happy New Year, Lady C, to you too. So nice to see the whole family together. It was nice, wasn't it? I so, so love having my boys and my girls with me. At some point, could you please speak to Queen Margareta's abdication? I wanted to get the bongo bongo drums beating properly before addressing the subject, and they have been pounding away. Do you think it had anything to do with Frederick's rumoured affair with the Mexican socialite? <laughs> I'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> the announcement came so quickly after the public sh published photographs of the two of them. Granted, it could be entirely innocent, but then Frederick would be guilty of being supremely stupid and insensitive to his wife and family. Last question. Do you think there is any chance that Frederick might restore his brother's children's former titles to them when he becomes king? Thank you for addressing these questions. And last but not least is Endless Possibilities, who says, Lady C, Denmark's queen abdicated. This seems unprecedented. Did she make that decision to cover up her son's scandal? Okie dokes, here we go. Let me plunge in. I've spoken to people close to the situation. I didn't want to guess and I didn't want to leap in and I didn't want to anticipate or jump the gun. Here goes. <clears throat> the first thing you need to understand is that Queen Margarita has put the crown above all else. As she herself has said, I never ever for once thought of putting my marriage before my country. That should tell you something about her as a person. She's incidentally known as Daisy. She used to be a chain smoker, 60 a day. Then she had back surgery last year and was made to give up smoking. Her health has not been great. Oh, does the supposed nonsense with Genoveva Casanova have anything to do with this? Not really. This has been some time in the making. It's not a snap decision. 
Crown Princess Mary, who will on the 14th of this month become Queen Mary of Denmark, went to Australia on a sort of goodbye trip. Crown Prince Frederick joined her a bit later. They knew what was coming. She's going to be able to spend a lot less time in Australia now that she's going to be queen than she ever was able to before. Incidentally, when the press says she is the first Australian queen, that's not so. Aside from the fact that every queen of Australia is the queen of the United Kingdom, so she wouldn't be the first Australian queen, but excluding the kingdom of the United Kingdom, there was Queen Susan of the Albanians, King Alika of the Albanians' wife. Admittedly, a queen in exile, but she was a queen nevertheless. I make that point for what it's worth. Uh, now, to get down to the nitty gritty. No, it's the queen's health that has focused her mind. Uh, there is no real tradition of abdication in the Danish house. I think the last abdication was some 800 years ago. But Queen Elizabeth II's death King Charles's accession, <clears throat> the whole business of Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary, who are in their 50s. They're not like William and Catherine, who are in their early 40s. They're in, well, he is in his mid 50s and she's in her early 50s. And the whole Genoveva Casanova business has just been a distraction that has really focused attention on what was already in the works and therefore desirable. It strengthens both King Frederick's hand and Queen Mary's hand. Oh, uh, let me see what the questions are again. Will he restore his nephews and nieces' titles? Hmm, let's wait and see. Queen Margarita took them away because she didn't want the marching which was taking place. Let's see what happens there. My understanding is that Prince Joachim, who I've met for the blink of an eye leader, and he was perfectly personable. My understanding is that he and his wife are not on the most cordial of terms with his brother. Also, there has been, which could be pointless speculation, that Prince Joachim was rather sweet on Crown Princess Mary. And in fact, his wife, who is French, her name is Marie, <laughs> incidentally, looks very much like Crown Princess Mary. You don't abdicate to as uh, well, uh, endless possibilities put it 
cover up a scandal. <laughs> I mean, the crown is not in danger and wasn't because of the speculation, which was deliberately leaked. Now, you have to ask yourself, since all of this has been in the offing for some time, could somebody who knew what was coming have deliberately leaked it to poison Crown Prince Frederick's pond? I leave you with that thought for what it's worth. And I'll just give you a little background. Queen Margarita, who's 82 years old, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, she was born in 1940. So that makes her coming up for 84. So she's 83. She was born in April 1940. She was the daughter of King Frederick the Ninth, most Danish kings are either Frederick or Christian. So when Crown Prince Frederick becomes King Frederick the Tenth, his son is going to become, his son with Mary is going to become Crown Prince Christian. Oh, her mother was Queen Ingrid, who was a princess of Sweden. The Swedes and the Danes and the Norwegians have been very interconnected because not only was the Queen, late Queen of Sweden, D Denmark, a Swede, but the King of Norway was a Danish prince who was the son of a king of Denmark. So there's a lot of interlocking in, in the households. Uh, she married in 1967, Count Henri de la Borde de Montpizard who was, if I remember correctly, he originated near Carmo, which is a major town near where our chateau was in the south of France. We were near Albi, he was near Carmo, and he was very typically French. And I have to tell you, they were a good-looking couple, and it was a love match, but he was not the easiest of men. He was a terribly, terribly French. And she made it absolutely clear that her first duty was to the Danes, and he wanted her first duty to be to him. It caused quite a lot of problems in the marriage. And by the end of his life, he was pretty much not living in Denmark. He was living primarily in France and announced to the world that he did not wish to be buried with her. Well, you can imagine how she felt about that. Um, they've had two sons. Frederick and Joachim. There are a lot of similarities between the way the Crown Princess Mary and Catherine Wales present themselves. They're both tall, they're both slender, they're both athletic, they're both dark-haired, they're both naturally good-looking women who have not resorted to plastic surgery with the result that they are both naturally good 
looking and known to be as such. And they both dress in a very similar way, which is a very classical, ladylike, glamorous way. You know, there are only so many possibilities of how you dress. And when people alight upon similarities, because two women have similar body shapes and dress in a classical way, of course there are going to be similarities. There are only so many colours, so many styles that you can resort to. Frederick, this Frederick, was born while his grandfather, King Frederick IX, was still alive. But the Danish monarchy has been extremely popular. It is so popular that it is almost impossible to exaggerate in a country that is resolutely egalitarian. They are unpretentious, they are very much down to earth, but they have a degree of reserve that they are always dignified and they are very popular with the populace as a result. Denmark is a very small country. It's only about between five and six million people. It's not that big a country. But it's, the crown has been extremely popular, especially since the Second World War, when Queen Margarita's grandfather, King Christian, he, during the war, he was, because Denmark was occupied by the Nazis and he didn't leave the country, but he did not collaborate. When, for instance, the Nazis decreed that all Jews should wear the Star of David, he put one on himself. He also organised for the Jews of Denmark to be smuggled into Sweden, which they were. It was a massive operation that he helped to sparehead. And he used to ride every day through the streets of Copenhagen on his favourite horse without a bodyguard. And it is possibly apocryphal, but possibly true, that one of the occupying soldiers queried how it was possible that the king could ride through the streets of his capital on his horse every day without a bodyguard. And he asked some of the citizens and they said, the Danish people are the king's bodyguard. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> well, finally he died. Margarita's father acceded to the throne. He only had three daughters, Margarita, Benedicta, who married Prince Richard sein Wittgenstein Berleburg, whose son has, and, and the son's wife, just produced an heir by surrogacy, all perfectly above board, all perfectly legal, nothing hidden about it all. And the third daughter was the rather lovely Queen Anne-Marie of the Hellings, who married King Constantine of the Hellings, sometimes called King Constantine of Greece, incorrectly, as it turns out. But a lot of people say 
king and queen of Greece, although they were king and queen of the Hellenes. Uh, so that's Margarita's family. And Crown Princess Mary shares some of Queen Margarita's personality traits. She's very cultured, in quotes. She's very musical, she's very artistic, and she's very sportive. Crown Prince Frederick is definitely not <laughs> artistic and cultivated the way his mother is, because she's actually a fine artist. And he doesn't really have the musicality of his wife, but he has her sportiveness. And he created uh, a very popular uh, event called Royal Run, where people of all ages, all abilities are encouraged to take part in a run. And it's become very successful and has helped to make him even more popular than he was. And they are a very popular couple. I think they're going to have a very good reign. They have a very solid marriage. They have four beautiful children. And all the nonsense that has taken place recently is a diversion and a bagatelle. So let's see what happens. Having said all of that, my understanding is it was a great shock to the Danish people because they never expected Queen Margarita to ever abdicate. But she's evidently been considering it for some time. And there have been problems in the family uh, which related to the children of Crown Prince, of sorry, Prince Joachim being de princified, so to speak. <laughs> New word, sorry. Uh, which evidently I was told by a great friend of mine. <laughs> who's the godson of one of the Scandinavian royals, that she was slightly questioning whether she had really done the right thing because of the tremendous backlash. Uh, but then she thought, yes, she had done the right thing. So who knows, who knows? I mean, in a situation like that, if you have any sensitivity, which she does, you always question. And I think the fact that Queen Elizabeth II, who was a great and close friend of hers, died. And I think that she's seen that King Charles has acceded and is doing a good job. But she's, I suspect, also aware of the fact that her son, if she lives for another 15 years will be a man of 70. And she has really said to people that because of the state of her health and because of the fact that Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary will be the crown will be left in very safe hands that she just felt all things being considered it was the right thing to do and i say good luck to her so run for cmt says with the danish queen abdicating will charles feel more pressure to do the same interesting question of course, we are not Denmark. 
Denmark is a small country with a small population. We are a much bigger country with a population that is well over 10 times as large. There's no comparison. The king is also the head of the Commonwealth. It's not a hereditary title. I think that it will add a bit of pressure and would help to green light the flow if he felt to put point himself in that direction. But I don't think it's going to happen. And I think that's a good thing. So let's leave it at that. Lance Martin says, Lady C, did you know that Saint Mega of Nothing <laughs> has been sacked by William Morris Endeavour and was asked to leave the CNN premiere of Chinchilla about the kidnapping of the kids and Saint Mega of Nothing, Prince Wow being asked to leave the Pearl Harbor Memorial Day weekend because she is a disingenuous, sketchy, narcissistic personality that was from the victims, now they want money for the kids' pictures. Well, <laughs> this, I think, something has got scrambled here. But I'll stick to the <laughs> William Morris endeavor. I've been trying to say for some time now that my understanding is that she was on very thin ice. Has she been sacked? She was never employed. You have an agent. The agent is instructed to find you work. What has happened is that people have noticed that on the William Morris Endeavour website, notwithstanding the fact that there is a comprehensive list of their clients who include such people as Ben Fleck, Emma Stone and Matt LeBlanc, there is no mention whatsoever of Meghan, of the Duchess of Sussex. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. But she is still listed on HWA, uh, which is the Speaker's Bureau for William Morris Endeavour. So she's not been completely... Uh, shall we say, let loose. And also, may I make the point that in situations with agents, if they find you work, even if you're no longer signed up with them, if something drops in their lap for you, there's nothing to stop them ringing you up and saying, Megsy baby, you won't believe it. I've got a job for you. Target wants you to do a line of Duchess clothes. Will you consider it? And you can call it the Duchess targets everybody and she most likely say yes because she knows Dior isn't going to be giving her anything anytime soon so I have to read this out because Raquel was very funny she left a comment truth hurts that's truth spelled conventionally, and hurts, H-E-R-T, 
TZ. <laughs> Isn't that cute? I just had to read it out. Some of you guys are just so wonderful. <laughs> and Deborah Thompson says, I think this is all Megan's idea. Harry would probably prefer to go places incognito. I think, Deborah Thompson, you're absolutely right. Harry thrilled to the idea of being chased by the paparazzi and fighting off their attentions when there were no paparazzi there. He did it before Meghan, but he wasn't ringing up the paparazzi to say, oh, Dave Bennett, Richard Young, I'm going to be at Mahiki at nine o'clock. Why, Megsy, of course. Jeff Rayner, it's your favorite friend. It's Ovad Dachos of Sussex. And I just wanted you to know that I'm not going to be in the car park at the supermarket at 9.47 tomorrow morning. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. And if you see anybody wearing a baseball cap with the hair of a Turkish virgin, oh, trailing on my back and it's a lookalike like me and if you notice that I've got on stress patches because I'm in such a state because of all that's been happening to me it's not going to be me so don't bother to send any photographers mm. PS testing says not only were they told they could exit the Hertz rent a car event quietly, I am sure they were told they could exit the British royal family without drama and given what they needed, not do so. I have no doubt Queen Elizabeth II did not want this to happen and wish them well in their new endeavors. This is not the scenario she would have set up. I had great faith in the late Queen. Meghan exploited and twisted it, and she and Harry continued to do so. They lied about support from the family, as shown in the Prince of Wales's accounts, as he was then, and Charles discontinued that support when he realized that was being used to pay PR firms to attack his family. All of this is actually very interestingly observed because Queen Elizabeth II was ambushed by Harry and Meghan. She was given 20 minutes notice about the announcement that was going to be made. She was horrified by how Harry had tried, tried to do a Diana, which Diana had done in the run up to her divorce with Charles, uh, and where private discussions were then used via the public media to create scenarios that would bounce the royal family into agreements that they had not made and had no intention of making. And yes, the whole idea was, you want to leave, we don't want you to leave, but if you want to leave, we will try to find a way to make it work so that everybody is happy. But Harry, on his own, would have gone along with this. There was no way Meghan was ever going to go along with it because it was going to deprive her of 
My normal Desmond moment, Mr. DeMille. I am ready for my close-up. And she, in her dumb, clack, clack handed unsophisticated, really hustler style away, didn't understand that what they had to sell that everybody wanted to buy was gold dust, stardust, glamour, with maybe a little bit of grit in there to sort of keep people slightly on the toes, but spewing forth venom, trashing the royal family, having already trashed her family and got away with that. But you see, she thought having got away with that, she was going to get away with trashing the royal family, instead of which she ended up unmasking herself. So yes, I think you're well observed. Hair for comments only says, Happy New Year, ladies. Happy New Year to you too. How likely will financial strain push the Sussexes back to Buckingham Palace in the absence of the noise from last year with Book Deals Netflix awards? It's not whether they have a need, it's whether anybody wants them back. And aside from the king, who hopes against hope that somehow a miracle will occur, I mean, he does genuinely believe in God and he does believe in miracles and good luck to him for hoping that he's going to be the beneficiary of one. Nobody else is hoping for any such thing. For them to come back, I don't see it happening, not in the short term, not knowing what's coming down the line this year. Let me put it that way. And to those of you who say that I have said that certain things were going to happen and they haven't happened, don't you think enough has happened already last year towards the end of the year? I don't know what you're waiting for uh, and why you are so dissatisfied that the final curtain hasn't fallen yet. A curtain is definitely going to fall later this year. And no, I'm not prepared to say what it is. And those of you who think I'm just spinning a yarn and leading you on, what can I say? You've got to follow your instinct. I am not trying to convince anybody of anything. Beyond saying, I don't see Meghan and Harry being welcomed back into this country as working royals. Not in the foreseeable future. And where some people are concerned, not ever. Vicky Dickinson says, regarding Harry's issue with security and IPP status, it would be bad enough for America to pay his security bill, but more concerning is him getting access to government's security threats reports. He is interfering in our government's affairs through the Aspen Institute, which actively works to undermine our free speech and other constitutional rights. He can take his mattress actress and the invisible children and find a nice quiet island to live on. Good riddance from an American patriot. Love your programs. 
Nigel, may I suggest that you ring up Uncle Fidel's brother or nephew or whoever's running Cuba tomorrow and day after tomorrow and the day after that and say to them, Raul, if he's still alive, I don't even know if he is, can you please take Harry and Meghan, put them in the governor's palace Do you think maybe we should have another island? Oh, like maybe St. Helena? <laughs> they can stay in Napoleon's villa? Mm. Well, it will be very interesting to see if the court bends where Harry's will is concerned with IPP status because he's not an internationally protected person and he shouldn't be and he shouldn't have not only the privilege of having his security paid for by whatever state he's living in as opposed to himself paying for it but also he should not have access to any of the information that goes along with such a privileged position. Nor should any of his staff. That's my take on it. I don't think any of them should be trusted at all. That's my take on it. So, but I don't think it's going to come to that. But we need to be patient because it's only a matter of time before there's some sort of ruling made. Baron Mulberry says, both Muggsy and H betrayed the paternal side of their family, becoming estranged not only from their father, but everybody in his family as well. They are close to their mother, in his case to Diana's memory. Neither has any sustained relationship with one, anyone else from their mother's side of the family. In Muggsy's case, this seems absolute safe for Ashley, whom I think she manipulates and exploits. Evidently, Nigerian kinship is for media appearances. There's absolutely no relationship with her part Nigerian relatives. The perfect symmetry of this surprises me. Well, I think Megsy Baby actually does believe in symmetry, you know. She has a tendril here and a tendril there. She knifes one family to the right and the other to the left. I think there is yeah, quite a degree of symmetry there, isn't there? Well, She has exploited her niece, Ashley, remember, the daughter of the sister she doesn't have. In my opinion, in the most disgusting way possible, because I could not believe when I heard Ashley on Netflix say that Meghan had told her that she couldn't come to the wedding because the palace didn't think it was advisable for her as Samantha's daughter to come since Samantha wasn't being asked. When I know as a fact from people who were involved with the whole process that the late Queen was quite intent on encouraging Meghan to ask her family and also ordered that Meghan's father and mother be given assistance. And Meghan refused it for the father. Well, of course, Diana's a very handy tool to exploit and deploy. She's dead. She can't fight back. And 
Doria. <laughs> so I'm a racist. <laughs> I know how to keep my trap shut. <laughs> and you rag a heap. <laughs> yes. I know how to keep my trap shut. <laughs> I'm used to environments where I say nothing except I'm dropping a little poison here and there. Ah, oh, yes. It's all so racist. Everything is racist. They're all such racists. <laughs> They think my grandson should have been kept as somebody who should be shown off to the people of that racist country as a result of being in that racist institution. Well, no, I backed up Meg to flower, treasure, heartfelt darling, the one who understands fully, never give the milk away for nothing. In fact, sell stale milk as if it were valuable yogurt. Mm. It could be said, one mother is dead and the other has never lived at all. Now, I don't want to say more than that, but if that's a little bit too obscure for you, let me put it this way. What are things that have never lived? Well, one thing is for sure, they're pretty heartless. And we will end with Julie C, who says, It was lovely to see you with your sons. Is it Misha who has the restaurant in Worthing, Sussex? It is Misha, but it's not a restaurant. It's a cocktail bar. And it is called Roots. And it's on Marine Parade. And it's really rather lovely. And I say that because Misha has done it himself. I helped him by buying the pictures and hanging them. But he did everything else. He chose the colours. He's seen what that, oh, this could have maybe different blinds. He came up with uh, the idea of British racing green for the faux leather, because nowadays, of course, rare leather is passe. So in my day, faux leather was, uh, nowadays, faux leather is the thing. And he even tiled the bar in British racing green. And it's really very chic. And it's got a lovely atmosphere, and I'm very proud of him. So, it's called Roots, and it's Misha's Bar, okay? And for all of you who said nice things about my boys, thank you very much. By and large, they're good guys. And I'm very proud of them. And on that note, I'll say, I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please remember to keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what to address for your entertainment, hopefully. Okay, thank you so much. God bless. And if you've really enjoyed this, will you please like, share, sub subscribe, press the notification bell and God speed.